finally get excited, everybody, because we have a lady coming on stage. A lady. And she is brand new to the stage here at Brickback Comedy at the Jazz House. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Miller! Hi, my name is Chris. Yes, I'm new, so please be gentle. And unlike that girlfriend you had your sophomore year of college, I actually mean it. It is my first time. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, I'm like our last comedian. I'm not emo. I'm not trying to be Dane Cook. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I know the other thing, you're looking at me and everybody's probably looking at my wrist. Yes, yes, I have a wrist brace. And everybody looks and it's like, oh, what happened? Like carpal tunnel, and the guys are going, ah. <laughs> I know you got carpal tunnel. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's nothing dirty. Um, it was just a masturbation injury. <laughs> <laughs> but see, the thing is, I have a very complicated masturbation relationship with my right hand. Um, we met young. <laughs> you know, we really developed something together. It was passionate. There was spark, young love for both of us. I really settled down with my right hand. But then a few years ago, I started thinking, did I feel down too early? You know, have I committed myself to a masturbation method too early in life? <laughs> and so I started kind of, I started playing around. Um, I, try, I tried to keep a secret from my right hand. I respect our relationship. We have a solid, good sexual relationship. But I, I was still sneaking a vibrator in, you know, here and there. Um, and then I met my left hand. <laughs> we didn't mean for it to happen, okay? I mean, this is like a Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie scenario, you know? I'm Brad Pitt, I am happy with Jennifer Aniston. I'm happy, it's good, but it could be better. <laughs> Unfortunately, my right hand found out, and now I have to wear this for two weeks. Um, right hand wasn't happy. <laughs> not happy. Um, I, I talk about my sexuality a lot, and that sometimes makes people really uncomfortable. Like my mom. <laughs> my mom is so uncomfortable talking about sex. Like, I didn't get the talk. I got a book. I got a book with comic book illustrations. Until I was 15, I thought my eggs talked and wrote my fallopian tubes like a water slide once a month. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she told me I could ask questions, you know, she wasn't just leading me astray, but she didn't really mean it, you know, because when I was 13, I went to my mom and I asked, how to con and stay on? <laughs> now, I'm 13, I've not had to talk, I've never seen a condom, I've never seen a penis, and I was genuinely curious, how does this shit stay on? I thought there were like little condom claws, <laughs> like, <laughs> you're done now. <laughs> I mean, these are things I really have to deal with though. I'm, I'm gay. It's wonderful. It's lovely. It's everything a man wishes he could be. I get to go in girl locker rooms. <laughs> yeah. I get to help soak the breath because you know, you know that's what you think happens in there. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> but I mean, I don't, I don't have to deal with the whole condom thing. Like, I go to the gynecologist and you have to fill the whole form and it asks, what pregnancy prevention methods are you using? I straight down homosexuality. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's really easy to make fun of. Like, it's incredibly easy. And I, I tend to make fun of it and I tend to make fun of my friends when I say things that are inappropriate and they're tactless. It's like, okay, I'm not a racist. I am not the racist guy at the party who says that really offensive joke and makes everyone extremely uncomfortable. You know the guy who's standing there in front of everyone? like, okay guys, I got the best joke. So a black guy and his black girlfriend are going on a date. Who's driving? The cop. 
<laughs> and everyone's just standing there so awkward. Like, do I laugh? If I laugh, am I racist? No, I'm not going to laugh. But there's this awkward silence that just stretches out forever. And the guy's like, no, no, it's okay. I'm not racist. I have a black friend. <laughs> and he's only got one black friend, just one, singular. He has a black friend. It's like the guy went around town, he found one black guy who would be friends with him, and then he was done. He's <laughs> like, I'm done, I can now get away with telling racist jokes. And I mean, I'm, I've been kind of like that with my friends, because I've had a diverse group of friends. Like, this is my friend Miriam. Miriam's Jewish. She passed out at a party, and I waved a penny under her nose, saying, that bring her around. <laughs> Right? Elizabeth is a bisexual Canadian. Of course, if you're one, you're kind of the other. So, <laughs> like, he's kind of, eh. I mean, you're talking about a country full of flannel and mountain. I mean, everything full of, eh. So she comes running in the room. She's like, oh my god, you guys, you're never going to believe what happened. I'm like, they invented maple syrup loop. <laughs> Apparently not. It's sticky. They haven't quite got down the chemical mixture right. But there's hope, people. There's hope. And if that's something I've learned with Obama's election, is that one day we will have maple syrup loose. <laughs>